It's so interesting. It's so interesting. It's so, it's so interesting. interesting. It's interesting. Welcome to It's So Interesting, where people talk about their work and life experience. My name is Praia von Moltke. I'm speaking with uh, Frau Praia von Moltke, and the date is November 16, uh, 2004, and we are speaking in her living room uh, in Norwich, Vermont. Bismarck forged the bonds of German unity in the flames of war. Well, the Prussian war. Was, was, the, when he called it blood and iron, yeah. that's for Bismarck, but not for Moltke. No, I gather you're, that's correct. He was really quite a, a peaceable, peace-loving yeah. person and never shot, a, shot in his life. And he was a kind of genius, a military genius. He obviously was very good. Yeah. He was really a very spiritually minded man. I mean, he studied yes. the Bible every day. Yes. Yeah. No, so he was a very, very interesting man. A sort of, he didn't talk much. Called, he was silent in seven languages. Yeah, that's right. That you found it. It's quite <laughs> famous for that. Yeah. Element of spirituality in this. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The family all together are gifted that way, I would say. My father in law undoubtedly was, and also my Helmut in a completely yeah. different way. Yes. Yeah. Advised by his doctor not to take the job because he was not in fit. To do that, and he did it all the same. I know lots of Prussians have this overdone uh, feeling of duty. Noblesse oblige? Well, not only noblesse, I mean, all Prussians generally think are yeah. very uh, law abiding and want to do their duty towards the, the, the uh, I wouldn't say community, because that's not the, the state, really. And then, of course, that's what the, those from Mordkis also. In spiritual. Yeah, they say, ah, oh, that kind of family. I actually read that the, that he and the Tsar, I mean, not the Tsar, the Kaiser, were very good friends. They enjoyed Ooh. each other. This, the one born in 1848, the World War I general. The one, that he was born in 1800. No, no, I'm talking about the second one. Second one, yeah. I'm sure they were, but not. Yeah. Yeah. But that they shared an interest in yeah. music and in and in spiritualism. But that was already the, William the Second. Yeah. It was World the unfortunate War. Kaiser. Yeah. There was one more fortunate who became Kaiser, and oh. then then came William the Second, who was the one who lost the war. Oh, that's the one I mean. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. Why not? I'm very interested in your parents-in-law, Helmut von Moltke. Yeah. And Dorothy. I'm yeah. interested in both of them because they were Christian scientists. They were Christian scientists. Yeah. He, he became a Christian scientist as a young man, but he never told me how it actually happened. Oh, he didn't. But there was a healing. He, he yeah. was healed now he by was, a Christian scientist. That's what I read. Uh, now he, but I don't know, I mean, I, I didn't sit down with him and say, tell me how, what happened. Unfortunately, I wish I had, but I hadn't. I didn't think about that at the time. I was just taking for granted yeah. that that was the story. And so he 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 was a, became a member of the of the church, and he brought his wife into it too. Uh, it's oh. Usually, usually people believe because it, it is an English speaking uh, movement or church, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it, uh, his wife brought it along because she, she is Scottish, but she did not bring the Christian science. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. It was he yeah. who yes. brought the Christian I thought that's the kind of thing you want to know. It, yes, of course. To find out. Yes. Can you tell me your impressions of Count von Moltke, the, the, the Christian scientist? Oh, I loved him. He was my father-in-law. Mm -hmm. And he was a very kind father in law. He was a little, he, he was quiet, not very, also not speaking very much, but he was erratic in his, in his movements. He would suddenly think, let's go to the, to the opera in Dresden, and Dresden is three hours by car in Kreisau, and then they would go 
went to the, the opera in Dresden and come back again the next day, but he'd also say to his children, now I have no more money and therefore I cannot support you anymore, when they were in the middle of, of university. Uh, I mean, this kind of thing, and he was, he did not, that was not vicious at all, it was just that he reacted on the spur of the moment, it, that made it a little difficult in the family. By financial yeah, about problems. financial things. Oh, I see. But yeah. he was a very, he was a very, very nice man. Mm -hmm. And I'm quite interested in his singing. You, you mentioned in your book that he was really, he could have had a concert career. He, he was no, he never had a concert too, but because you see, but that, in that generation, that wasn't done. Karl Moltke would not sing. Because he's a count? No. Oh. But you heard him sing and he was a beautiful singer. I'm sure he sang himself into the heart of his his lovely wife. Oh. Because really? that is quite an extraordinary story oh. how they met. Um, because I, I, I'm not sure who advertised, but some either the, the people who came to Kaiser advertised or my father-in-law's mother did, who was a very unorthodox, enterprising lady. Mm -hmm. In any case, in the, in the paper was an advertisement that two, two, yeah, two ladies of Frankfurt were looking for a place in the country to visit. And my mother, my, my husband's grand, my grandmother may have been the one who asked for such people or she saw the advertisement. In any case, she invited the two ladies, and the two ladies had come from South Africa together to give the daughter an interesting tour of Europe. She was in her early 20s. Is that what you call the Bildungsreise? Yes, it's the Bildungsreise. Oh, is that in my book? Like, mm -hmm. uh, anyway, they came to Kaisau, and that was quite something, you know. They came into this big country, house in the middle of the summer, mm. and, and that was always full of people, relations. Mm -hmm. It was sort of a center of the family, and, and at that stage he must have been singing quite a lot. And he's probably, she heard him sing, or she, whatever it was, you know, when one falls in love, you don't know why you fall in love, <laughs> but it just happens, and it happened to, to those two. Yeah. Uh, and and the mother from South Africa was horrified because she did not want her daughter to marry into the far east of Germany. It was their only child, and they wanted to have her near, uh, near themselves in South Africa. He was a high judge, the chief justice of South Africa. They had lots of nice young men there, they thought that would be good for their daughter, and instead of which she fell in love with this man in the east of Germany. Yes, and so they said, all right, well, they were tolerant people, but they said, wait a year, and see whether you still want the same thing. And then they wrote letters, and I think my father-in-law was not so good at letter writing either. I don't know. It sort of seemed to have cooled a little bit. But then his father, the singer's father, he yes. died. Oh, and yes, he yeah. became the owner of Kaiser. And then he thought he, he wanted to, I haven't, he hasn't told me this, but obviously he was w thinking of his love and wanted her and found out that they were on a second, they went to England quite often, on a second or trip that they're in England. And he went to England and, and found her there and asked her to marry him. And she did it. And so he had to go to, to Pretoria in South Africa to, for the wedding. Oh, they and were from Pretoria? Yeah, they were, oh. he was there in Pretoria because he oh, was the judge. Oh. Well, he still he does it. I think he was. Were they originally from Cape Town? Then, uh, well, when we are, no, they're from the, from the eastern province. Oh. There they are 1820 settlers, those families, Scottish mm -hmm. settlers. Yeah. You know, the British took the Cape away from the, from the Dutch. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
and so then they wanted to people it too, and so they encouraged people to settle in South Africa. So and did you know Dorothy's parents? Did oh yes, very know? well. Lovely, lovely, lovely people. Yeah. We went twice to visit them. Oh really? And of course, we, I lived in South Africa a long time. How, how long were you there? Oh, nine years altogether. Oh really? Because after the war, when we came out of Kaiser, and, and uh, Germany was in, in Chambu, yeah. I, I, I had this offer to go to South Africa with the children. And oh. I did never want to go for good. Oh, after World War II? Oh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I pretty quickly, leave, after leaving Kaiser, yeah. you know, Kaiser, you know. Oh, yes. You went from Kaiser to Berlin, didn't you? To first? Berlin and from yeah. Berlin to... to to, to Switzerland, and oh. there I left the children and went back to to Berlin, and then I, l I went back to the children, and it took all a long time. It took, then we went to South Africa, and there we stayed then for nine years, nine years. Because I, I, I wanted to give my children the quiet, long school years, and no, no upsets again. Well, were your parents-in-law still there? No, oh, they, they were, they, my parents-in-law were right. dead. My grandparents in law were dead. No, I meant actually. I meant the uh, the grandparents were lost. They, the they, they died during the war. Oh, 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 uh, Sir James. Yeah. Sir Rose. James and Lady Innes. Yeah. And what was his wife's name? Rose Innes. And, and his wife? Is she was called Pringle. But Pringle. That, uh, yeah. But it's not all very Scottish names. What was her first name? Jessie. Jessie. Oh yeah, I've seen pictures of them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, your husband was very much like his grandfather, wasn't he? Yeah, not to look at, because he was very, very tall, and the grandfather was a short man. Oh, oh. Uh, he the, looked like his, his mother. Face, not his face. He was not like him, but he had, had uh, he had uh, interest in the law, which was uh, in for very much influenced by his grandfather's legal. Can you tell me about Dorothy? I mean, what? Well, she was a, she was an absolutely lo lovely uh, person. And if you read German, I can give you a wonderful book, which unfortunately is not in English. Um, you were telling me about your impressions of Dorothy, your yeah. mother-in-law. She was. A, I, I said how she was loved by everybody. Yes. She really was loved by everybody, and she was a wonderful, warm understanding center of, of Kaiser. But that's in the letters, of course, very much. Very, very in her letters. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. I, I, have to, I didn't have a dictionary with me when I read them, so I need to go back and reread. But, yes, I had if that. If you have to read with a dictionary, you can't really, you can't really enjoy it. It's too, much, it's too much stress and work. They're not available in English? No, I, I was just going to tell you how tragic it is, because the letters, of course, are all written in English. Where are they? They are in Germany. Oh, they are still yeah, scattered. Yeah. Uh -huh. But um, there's not enough interest in this country for, for an uh, English edition. Uh -huh. There's no, no publisher will take that, uh -huh. because there's such a limited, for a, for a limited group of people, uh -huh. they're fascinating. Yes. But it's such a small group. Oh. So, uh, and uh, uh, the uh, publishers won't take it off. So it's only in German, and they have now made, what is it, uh, when they throw it on the market, you know, they throw it out the books. Oh, yeah. The auto finished there. We bought hundreds so as not to, to let them go. Of, of which books? Oh, I'll, I'll read it in German, but... Um, no, but if it's t then it's better to listen to me because that's much <laughs> yeah. more, uh, yes. more easier for yeah. you to take in. Then, but, and she was, but you get it through reading her very beautiful English that yeah. she wrote. And she, she, her father and mother were quite demanding intellectually. Oh, really? Yeah, interesting, lively people, yes. politically very. Mm. She had to live up to them. And she had also always to defend her husband to them because they never thought he was good enough for her. Oh, my. Yeah, but it, it, I can quite understand it, knowing them both. Of course, I think Helmut, my father-in-law, was, a, was, a, was a, 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 a nice man, but he was not uh, intellectually very interesting. 
he oh. sang. And he was artistic. He didn't read very much. Oh. My mother-in-law read much more than my father-in-law did. Oh. And, and she had uh, taste for literature and taste for, for everything, really. And she, she loved, well, the opera they, they did love because they went to Dresden to, to the opera or, or because, but he was, he was different from her. And, uh, and, he, and later on, Christian science absorbed him very much. Yes, I'm interested in that. Did he talk about Christian science at all? In the he, he talked to, not much because he, there was none of the, as I wrote in the book, none of the children picked it up. And my, the youngest was a daughter, Asta. Yes. She does not live anymore. Oh. Mm -hmm. Nobody lives. None of the children are, no, are not living. anymore. Oh. Uh, but she, uh, she, she was. She went faithfully to Wednesday services and Sundays. Are you talking about Dorothy or Asta? Asta. Asta with did. Oh, the daughter mother. did. Oh, really? Um, yes, for oh. a long time. When I came to Christ, oh, she yeah. still did that. But she gave it up. No, you went to services. Where were the services? Oh, they, they had made it. They had made found quite a group. In or they had founded a group in the town near Kreisau called Schweidnitza. Now Schweidnitz. Schweidnitz is at the at the German. Oh, and Schweidnitz was only six kilometers from four miles, five miles from from Kaiser, and they would go in every Wednesday and they would go in every Sunday. And the daughter went too. And the daughter went too. But, Only but, the daughter. But none went of the to, sons were interested. In not the four sons were never right. interested. Yeah. But my father in law, they were very good to me and they took me in very much. I, I was I I was I had a very good reception and a very good life in that, in that family. Well, I, I think from my reading, they were very fond of you. Yeah, yeah. and it was vice versa. And yeah. so I had a, a very good relationship with them. But, and so one day I was ill and had a, a bad, uh, a very upset inside stomach. And my father-in-law came and tried to, uh, to heal to me. Did he succeed? Well, I did get better very quickly in any case. <laughs> they did come, you know, yeah. because he, he came and sat with me. Oh, nice. Did, did she ever talk about Christian science? Oh, yes, she did. She talked about Christian science yeah. all right. Do you think she was truly, she seems to have been a very dedicated Christian she scientist. She can't she would not do anything. She would, but that was not serious. I mean, she was a very straight, fought, straight person, so yeah. she... Yes. And he became a practitioner and teacher in Berlin. I yeah, that's right. but that, of course, Schweidnitz was a small place. Yeah, yeah. It was quite extraordinary that they had a group there, but they did have a group. How far is Berlin from Kaisal? Uh, it's, it's about five hours by train and by cars. It's so interesting. It's so interesting. It's so, it's so interesting. interesting. It's interesting.